I've kind of been feeling old world. I've been looking at old models, army lists, read and lore, and I've really been wanting to get into old world. And like, as if by magic, something amazing has happened. Games Workshop has reached out and sent me all of old world. And it's kind of surreal. Like I've been doing this almost 10 years and I've been a fan of Warhammer longer than that. And it's really validating to like be recognized by the company. No, I'm just kidding. Games Workshop has never heard of me. But I do have a bunch of dwarves. These dwarves are ancient and have seen better days. But now that Old World is back, it's time to literally dust off these models and get them onto the tabletop. These models are tiny and kind of bad. There has been at least 20 years of progress in the mini dwarf technology field, but I want to see if there is something special about these old models. I have dwarf warriors, thunderers, a king and lord, and a pair of war machines, a cannon, and an organ gun. I don't have the Forces of Order book in my hand, so I don't know exactly how many points this is, but it feels like a start collecting's worth. And these minis are small, about a third the size of a modern space marine. And the previous owner used good old Games Workshop plastic glue, the thickest, chunkiest plastic glue west of the Rockies. It took a lot of dremeling to get these guys off their bases. To get down a little texture, I used Vallejo Thick Mud Texture Paste, which in addition to sand, has a little bit of dirt in it for added realism. The texture paste was having a hard time sticking to the bare plastic, so I primed the minis first, giving the paste something to hold on to, and that helped a lot. I am really excited to sink my teeth into these models, cause they're so little! You could call them miniatures! Even by fantasy standards, these guys are tiny cause they're the dwarves. And I like to think of myself as a strapping Tolkien-esque dwarf. Although if I'm being honest with myself, I'm a hobbit. Will these guys be hard to paint up? Will they be really easy? There's only one way to find out. Dwarves are made of rock and stone, so I don't want to do a classic white zenithal. Instead, I went for a brown. Poop brown to be specific. Hopefully if there's anything really hard to reach with the brush, I can just leave it alone and at least it'll be brown. Right off the bat, these models are soft and squishy with the details, so I decided to make this project a hundred times harder on myself. Non-metallic metals. I started off with a dark blue gray, base coating all the metal and gave some areas a splash of darker gray, then moving on to the highlights. I used a desaturated blue for my highlights, hitting about 60% of every blue surface, making a lot of small dots and scratches to create some texture. Then some dots and scratches of a light blue gray covering about 20% of the blue areas. And before I get to the final specular highlights, I repeated the process for the gold. The brown can be my first layer and I moved right on to a highlight of earth brown. Then some small highlights of yellow and now both my metallics are in the same spot, I can load up with some white and make some small dots to show the shine. This is the step that turns these colors into convincing metallics. I picked out what little of the dwarf's faces is visible with skin color and then came the question. What do I do color-wise on these dwarves? It might be a stereotype, but I'm feeling some bright orange beards on everyone. Now what looks really good with orange I hear you all asking? Green. I threw some green over his cape and I figure I'll just go dwarf by dwarf picking out which parts of their clothing will be green or brown. My first dwarf is done! And this little guy didn't take that long to paint, probably a little bit under an hour, but that's gonna get faster and faster as I gain more experience. But speaking of experience, I have none. Well, I have one, but I want these guys to turn out really, really good. And that's gonna require some experience. So I think for best results, I'm gonna start knocking them out one by one, making slight changes to the recipe until I've really got it down. And then I can start assembly lining these suckers. On my first dwarf, I don't know how I feel about his beard. It's fine, but it's pretty flat. And these handles might need some attention, but there's already so much brown in the mini, I don't know if I want to add another shade of brown. I lightened up my dark red and base coated the next beard I came across. Then I did my orange highlight, and instead of stopping here, I did a yellow-orange mix. Looking at it next to my test model, it's indistinguishable, so definitely not worth the extra step. On my next beard, I thought maybe it's about shading. I shaded the beard with an orange wash, Fugen, orange to be exact, and it instantly turned my dwarves into the Age of Sigmar Fire Slayers. I'm definitely not looking for something so saturated. On my next dwarf, I tried some yellow highlights to pick out the individual hairs, but the sculpt is so shallow, I just couldn't edge highlight them well. So in the end, I decided that the regular orange is just fine. Also, please learn from my mistakes. If your models are holding big shields, make sure you know where those shields are covering so you don't waste a day painting your dwarf's whole front before hiding them behind giant shields. In my Dwarf Warrior Squad, I have a banner dude and some musicians. All lined up, they look like they're about to drop a sick album. On the horn, I broke it down into two parts, the metal steel parts and the gold parts. On all the steel parts, I base coated with my dwarf non-metallic metal formula, dark blue, blue, light blue, and then for all the gold and earth brown and yellow. 
And once I had all my colors stippled onto the model, I loaded up with some white paint and did lots of dots. Little dots of white on edges, corners, and any little detail I thought could use some spice. The dwarves make the best gear, they keep it nice and polished. On my little drummer boy, I painted gold in his drum, and then for the leather top and drumsticks, I thought these would be a nice leather, probably orc leather, as dwarves hate orcs. I made up a warm brown and put this over the drum and made a gradient from black around the rim. Stippling some pink in the middle, like the leather is rubbed clean on the spots that get drummed on. And for the banner guy, this banner is the reason I wanted to do non-metallic metal. It would look good with some gunmetal and gold paint, but it's such a great canvas for non-metallic metal. I can really get a lot more detail than is actually on the model by layering on the colors and creating some textures with scratchy brush strokes. Each dwarf warrior needs a shield, and I thought this would be easier to paint off the models. I started with some airbrushing, doing a dark green from underneath and a light green from above. This looked unnaturally perfect next to my dwarf, so I sponged on some scratches. Then picked out the trim and faces with a brown base coat and an Agrax Earthshade wash to pick out all the little details. Having the shields off helped, but now I want to have something to hold on to for painting the details, so I glued the shields down and went to town shading and highlighting with gold. Painting a brown from underneath and a yellow from above, a nice gradient on these simple shields. I have finished a squad of dwarf warriors. I've never done anything with square bases before. And speaking of square bases, these are not new models, and yet they're standing on the appropriate 25 millimeter square bases. How did I pull that off? Well, it is thanks to today's sponsor, Cobalt Keep. Cobalt Keep makes the highest quality wargaming bases around. Using more plastic than other manufacturers, their bases have a solid, robust feel. And as if being the best wasn't enough, they also have magnet slots built into each base so you can magnetize your minis perfectly with no guesswork. And they work perfectly on Cobalt Keep painting handles. The majority of my Warhammer army stand proudly on Cobalt Keep bases, which is easy as they have all the sizes you could need. And their newest addition to the range is a selection of square bases. New and returning Warhammer Fantasy fans can have whatever they need, whether it's the classic 20mm square to add to an existing army while keeping things consistent, or the new larger 25mm base, Cobalt Keep has you covered. As well as the rank and file sizes, Cobalt Keep also has the 25 by 50 rectangles, 50 by 50 squares, and the monstrous 50 by 100 base size available now with plans to provide more sizes in the near future. If you have a brain like me where the serotonin just flows when things are just mwah, perfect, give Cobalt Keep bases a try. Shop with the code EOB10 to get 10% off your order of square and rectangle bases from Cobalt Keep. These old models are kind of interesting. They're a little bit tricky to paint because the details are a little bit softer than modern stuff, so it's hard to take advantage of like washes and contrast paint, but they're so little that things don't really take very long. Like I gotta paint his beard, but his beard is this big. I gotta paint his gloves, but his gloves are this big. Everything kind of wraps up really quickly. So I'm wondering how long, now that I have experience, how long will it take to paint up the heroes? I have a rune lord and a dwarf king to lead my fledgling army into battle, and if any of you guys know what's hot in the dwarf list, please share in the comments. I started my timer and got to work. I painted his cape a lovely green, starting really dark and then layering up through my mid-tone green. And that's where I stopped on my warriors, but for the hero, I decided to go a little further, mixing yellow into my green to do a few more layers of highlights to make this cape look electric. After his cape, I picked out his little bit of exposed skin, and then it was time for the beard. This dwarf looks old, his beard goes down to his ankles, so I figured he's gone gray. I base coated the beard gray and made a quick shadow along his mustache and where his beard sit, and then made thin lines of light gray and then lines of white. I painted all his steel parts just like my warriors with blue gray which stands out from the gray on his beard, and then for the gold. Please note, his hat is an anvil. It's absolutely adorable and reminds me of the famous Wisconsin cheese hats that all of us Scanies are born with. With him just about done, I threw some gray over his rock. In just over an hour, I had a lovely little rune lord. This guy was pretty simple, I'm hoping his buddy the king is just as quick. I thought the king needed to be absolutely decked out in gold, so I painted all his armor gold. This is a real test for non-metallic metal, and I kind of faked it. I base coated everything in earth and then layered up lighter browns and yellows over the details. Doing edge highlights and not really following light bouncing or reflections, but just kind of going with an up-down xenithal. Leaving behind less and less highlights makes it look like he's all yellow, but some spots are not catching the light and look more brown. And the brightest spots get a little touch of white for a reflection. It's not perfect, but I think it's a lot more interesting than just shiny gold would look. I figured the king is a little younger than the lord, so he still has a red beard. Where I think it went wrong with my warriors was washing with orange. I washed my king with Agrith Earthshade, which gave me nice brown recesses. And on top of that, I layered up highlights of orange. For his beard beads, I picked these out with non-metallic metal steel, which looks great next to the orange, and separates them nicely from his gilded armor. Once the blue was on there, I covered him in little white dots for all the shiniest highlights. Then I gave him the same green cape that my rune lord has, and some gray over the base, and his royal highness was finished in almost exactly the same time as the lord. 
I got my Rune Lord and I got my King. I think this model used to be called Belagar. But really, I don't know. I don't know if these are the best choices for a dwarf army. It's really weird to go into an army project without any real knowledge or experience with the actual game. Warhammer Fantasy Battles existed. I remember seeing it out of the corner of my eye. My cousin played it, but I never really got a chance to experience it. And so maybe I'm trying to relive just a little bit of nostalgia with this army. And it's been really fun to experience a different type of painting. These are proper miniatures. I'm very used to modern Age of Sigmar and 40k where everything is big. Real big. Like a Redemptor Dreadnought is a project. It is bigger than most action figures. But this is a vehicle. It's a little cannon. And it looks like a little cannon. Oh, you little cute little cannon. It feels very, very approachable. And in the time it would probably take me to paint up like one Sentinel for the Imperial Guard, which is a relatively small model, I can knock out two whole vehicles. These are the Dwarf Cannon and Organ Gun. I assume the Organ Gun is a little bit better because it's a little bit taller. And amazingly, the back of the cannon can actually open and close. I don't know how that mechanism has remained unglued or unstuck all these years, but it's really fun. The two colors I have going on for metal in my army is a very blue-gray and a yellow gold, and I feel like for my cannons, I want to combine the two. I made up a watery black on my palette and lathered up the cylinders that make up the cannon barrels, and while it was still wet, I dripped on a little blue and a little brown and smeared it together. It's subtle, but it's nice to have a limited palette do so much work across so many models. I base coated the decorations with brown. I figured these parts would be picked out with Dwarven Gold. I highlighted up through brown, yellow, and white to get some nice gold, and this white gave me an idea. To make the gun a little more interesting, I stippled on a little bit of light gray in a line down the front, making lines of smaller drops until I had a reflection. This adds a ton to what is essentially tubes. Now to paint up the rest of the cannon in Dwarven Green. I base coated and highlighted until the chassis looks sharp, and it looks a little bit Dark Angels actually, and then I picked out the rest with gold. The gunner spot has gold on the floor. That's how you know the dwarves are rich, when their floor mats are gold. Now the only thing left is the wheels, and I would like to make the wheels gold too, but they are glued on for the rest of time, and I cannot get a brush in there, so I think if I go steel, I can make it work. I dry brushed some dark blue gray, and then did some highlighting to make it look like the wheels are cast just like the cannon barrels. My dwarf army is rapidly materializing in front of me, and it's making me wonder what to do about these bases. I got some texture paste down on there, but what kind of environment are my dwarves walking through? Are they walking through a meadow, a big grassy field, some kind of desolate plains? I think it all comes down to the static grass. Static grass is not a tool I reach for often, but I feel like it's the look of classic fantasy. Flat bases with some grass. But what color grass? I have a bunch, and luckily, I can try before I buy. I have OG Warhammer grass, which is a little too retro for my army. Why is every 10th blade of grass fire truck red? Yeah, not the look. I also have this fall stuff. It's shredded and dyed foam, and I would love to use it somewhere, but I have no idea how. On the base, it looks... Well, it's the color and texture of fall, but it's not quite leaves. Maybe on another project. This is an interesting product. It's tan flock with tan foam chunks. It looks like a prairie environment. It's a lovely color, but a little too bright for my dwarves. This might be the one. Ugly green and sickly tan colored grass. I really like the bit of green in here. It matches the green of my dwarves, but it's just not Jimmy and my jams. This stuff, I think, is the winner. The tan is pretty close to my dwarf's yellow, and it's got a lot of green in there. It also has sand, which is interesting. I think with a little bit of Army Painter Battlefield Flock, it'll be just right. I dry brush some of my original brown over the bases to start highlighting the texture, and then some earth brown. And then it finished off with a dusting of tan color, just a little. I've gotten myself into trouble before making my bases really bright with the highlights. Now for the flock, a little Elmer's glue put into a few puddles on the base, and then I put on my static grass and sprinkled on some shredded cork. These have a hint of orange in them, just like my dwarves. On these big old bases, I use scenic glue to lock down the sprinkle of cork, and on the dwarves, I drip the glue onto each piece. It's a little extra tedious doing this with the dwarves already attached, but I really want a strong bond between their little feetsies in the base, and that means plastic to plastic. It's amazing that these dwarves ever stood on 20mm bases. They really fill out a 25. They must have been rubbing elbows before the size increase. They're now painted and standing proudly on their bases. It took a while. It took a long time to paint 30-something miniatures. 
And was it worth it? Because there's other dwarves out there, not even just 3D prints, there's other plastic dwarves out there. Was it worth digging up the old 30-year-old miniatures? Well, no. But maybe. These models have a provenance. They have a history that I wasn't a part of. You could call it an old world. And I'm kind of glad that I'm not collecting one of the new factions because it makes it that much harder and excites the collector brain in me. Hunting down these old minis and getting to see them for the very first time is kind of exciting and fun. And speaking of fun, this isn't all I've got. I've got about double more. About 20 more warriors, 20 miners, and the piece de resistance, Thorbrim Grudgebearer, missing the arms. Which just means that I gotta figure that out and mine will be even cooler than the original. I am very excited to see this army come to life and I need your help. I've got this empty banner right here. My dwarves have a grudge against Sean's Bretonians, and I need help coming up with what that grudge is. What did they do that made my dwarves so angry? Did they make a yo mama joke? Did they step on their foot? Leave a comment below of what you think the grudge should be. I have a lot more opinion to do, but I'm very excited to have this much progress on my Warhammer army. Big thanks to Cobalt Keep for helping me get my dwarves magnet ready. And as always, thanks for watching.